So let's take a look at the mechanism for a generic nucleophilic acyl substitution. An acyl group uh, would be any of our carboxylic acids or derivatives. And so we might draw it, uh, a substrate for this type of process, as having that carbonyl along with a leaving group on it, which we'll represent as Z. And what happens in this sort of process is we will have our nucleophile come in and attack. Here it comes. We'll say our nucleophile is negatively charged because that just makes things a little bit easier for us. Nucleophile comes in, and we're going to open up this uh, double bond to oxygen. All right, so this is an equilibrium step, it should be noted. So we're going to have this alkoxide. We have our Z group, and then we have our nucleophile. And this is a, a very important uh, step in this, that we don't have a concerted process, meaning this is not one step. There are two steps that happen in this. The first one is the nucleophilic attack. And now, as we're in our intermediate here, um, that uh, carbonyl wants to come back down again, and it has choices. It can, as it's com coming back down, reforming that double bond, which is greatly stabilizing, it can kick out any of those three groups. It can kick out our Z, which is the ideal situation. That's the leaving group. We want that to leave. We've put it there for a reason. It could kick out the nucleophile again, if your Z is not a very good leaving group. Uh, but you can't really kick out the R. We'll see that R groups as hydrogens or carbons will not be removed. Uh, they're not leaving groups. Uh, if you were to remove them, they would attack right back at the uh, carbonyl again and reform this intermediate. So uh, we don't typically see um, R groups leaving, but uh, there will be exceptions to this uh, next chapter. So <clears throat> with this, when we're taking a look at, uh, at what's happening here, we have to determine, is Z or our nucleophile a better leaving group? And so that, that really depends on what Z and the nucleophile are, right? If they're similar, say we have a methoxy and a hydroxy, they're, they're pretty similar, right? And, and we have to determine what's going to happen based on equilibrium concentrations then, right? If we overload the system with methoxy, we're going to end up kicking out a hydroxy instead because it's, it'll be statistically more likely that a hydroxy group will be kicked out because the methoxies are, are more prevalent around, right? And the Shatley's principle says we're going to go towards products if we throw in more reactants, right? So uh, with this, we have to make that determination. That's the, the real big question this entire chapter uh, for nucleophilic acyl substitutions. And so assuming that Z is the better leaving group, it gets kicked out. And we will end up now reforming our carbonyl with our new nucleophile attached. Uh, and so it's, it's a very simple mechanism, right? Nucleophilic attack, loss of a leaving group, reform the carbonyl. Done. Hooray. Important, though, again, do not do this as a concerted process. Do not just have nucleophile attack, Z leaves. Two steps. So um, because we have to make that determination. And these are equilibrium steps, right? So... Uh, that means that if we are wanting something to happen, if we have a, a um, our nucleophile is not a very good nucleophile and it's actually a pretty good leaving group, uh, you know, we really have to force this uh, sort of thing to happen. And we can do that by uh, employing Le Chatelier's principle. So that's the question here. So statistically, is Z or the nucleophile a better leaving group? That's one question. And then you also have to consider concentration effects if they are similar leaving groups. All right. So. Um, we can take a look at an example. Let's take a look at the uh, base catalyzed hydrolysis of an acid chloride. If we uh, put this with OH minus and H2O, in basic conditions, uh, which hydroxide would be, the mechanism is, is straightforward. It's the same that we've looked at. Remember, with um, basic conditions, we don't really want to form positive charges. Um, we want to not have any strong acids present. So what we're going to have is our hydroxide will come in. It's going to pop open our 
carbonyl. This is technically an equilibrium step. We have our alkoxide, our chlorine, and our hydroxy. Notice that we've um, <clears throat> kept the kind of charge consistent throughout this. We have a negative coming in, we have a negative in our intermediate, and as we kick out our leaving group, we will have a negative there as well. So we're keeping things consistent. That's how we know uh, we're kind of in this, the, the good ballpark for, for a plausible mechanism. So <clears throat> we now have to determine, is chlorine a better leaving group than hydroxy? Absolutely. We spent a long time uh, discussing that. Chlorine is very state, chloride is very stable, so it's happy to leave. And I'm not even gonna put this one as equilibrium because it's, it's very hard to put that chlorine back. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and have our hydroxy group. And we will uh, produce our chloride ion uh, by, as the side product. So negatives all around here, consistent with a base catalyzed mechanism. That's a good thing. We can take a look at an acid catalyzed one as well. <clears throat> so let's take a look. So acid catalyzed. Why don't we do um, an ester this time? No, no, we'll, we'll be good. We'll, we'll stay with our, uh, with our acid chloride. If we take a look at acid-based uh, mechanisms, remember that we want our first step to be the one that uh, forms, um, or that is a protonation step. So, like always, we are gonna want our first step to be protonation. And so just like with the aldehydes and ketones in acidic conditions, we're gonna protonate our carbonyl. That should have a plus charge on it, sorry. Once we do so, we have our uh, protonated form. And we do this again because we want to avoid the presence of strong bases when we have acidic conditions. So now our water comes in as a nucleophile. It's going to go ahead and attack. In doing so, Notice, again, that we have no um, negative charges around here. Everything is positive. No strong bases are present. We'll have a deprotonation step. Uh, I'm always doing these deprotonations in the absolute corner. Forgive me. <laughs> we'll have our water come in deprotonate. So again, we're having uh, positive charges all around, no negatives, so we lose an H3O+. Plus. This is what we'd expect anyway. So we have our leaving group. So one of these can condense back down, it doesn't matter which one, to form the carbonyl. Oh, sorry, wrong color. So acid catalyze a bit more involved, just to avoid the presence of strong bases. Uh, in our mechanism here, but we'll see that this mechanism will apply for all manner of, of uh, nucleophilic acyl substitutions. So uh, it's a good that, good that we'll spend a little bit of time on it. So we'll end up reforming our protonated form of our acid, and now we can have another water molecule come around and do our last step, which should always be a deprotonation for an acid catalyzed mechanism. And doing so now we end up with our uh, plain old carboxylic acid. So pretty standard. Let's take a look. Let's compare these two. The base catalyzed one, super easy. Hydroxide attacks, uh, forms that alkoxide, comes down, kicks out our leaving group, and we're done. Hooray. Easy. <laughs> this is the base catalyzed. The acid catalyzed is a little bit more uh, involved, we can say. First step, we're going to protonate our, car our carbonyl, then have it attacked by our nucleophile. Notice we have a, a really crappy nucleophile water. Comes in, attacks. We have a deprotonation step. We have a hydroxy group condensing it back down to reform that protonated carbonyl, and then a deprotonation step. 
And so we lose our, our leaving group and we end up with our carboxylic acid. So a little bit more involved, but the idea here is that our mechanism is consistent with the reaction conditions. If we're doing a reaction in acidic conditions, no strong bases are allowed, meaning we can't just have the water attack directly. All right. There is one exception to this when we have amines attacking. Amines are nucleophilic enough that we can have them attack without the protonation step. Uh, so that, that's one case where we don't need to see it. I'll, I'll, I'll make, mark that down here. Um, amines are uh, okay to attack um, without protonating. Uh, in acidic conditions. So for example, if you have your R group, your amine, where it is, can go ahead and attack directly, and you're going to end up forming this weirdness. You'll have something that has a positive and negative in the same molecule. Uh, that is okay with amines. Only with amines. Don't do this with anything else. No, nothing with water. We don't want to have a positive and negative in the same molecule uh, for for water. Um, so we're okay with amines. We're allowed to do this, um, but that's the only only situation. All right. And then of course, what would happen is we would close back down again, kick out the chlorine. We would have our protonated amide, and then that would. Uh, something would take its uh, extra proton away. So um, we'll see uh, that amines are the only case where we're going to have positives and negatives in the same molecule for mechanisms uh, when they're attacking as nucleophiles. Everything else here, notice in this acid catalyzed one, we don't have a single negative charge around. Positive, 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 positive everywhere. All right. And we're, we're producing uh, acid as our byproduct, right? Uh, which is our catalyst. So uh, everything is positive. And in our base catalyzed one, everything is negative. We have a negative in every step. So uh, we're being consistent. All right, so uh, that's the idea here behind these general mechanisms. In our next video, we'll start taking a look at the reactions of acid chlorides uh, because they're going to be our most reactive of all of our derivatives. And then we'll go down uh, in terms of reactivity uh, to our next ones and hydrogens. All right, take care.